Hi guys, in this video we'll see how we can apply a polar coordinate system for solving different engineering mechanics of a dynamics problem. Just like the problem presented here. So the question stated that the small block P starts from rest at time t is equal to zero at point A and then move up the incline with the constant acceleration A. So determine r dot and then theta dot as a function of time. This is the equation. So in this video, we'll see how we could apply the concepts of this polar coordinate system for solving such types of particle. Now, the particle when travel from starting from point A, it will have its own parameter. First of all, we have to know that the constant and then the variable parameters here. Now the uppercase letter R and then the angle alpha are constant. They may not be changed with respect to time, but the other parameters like theta, R and S, these parameters are a variable as a function of time. So we have to first take out the given part and then try to solve them. When we start from the given part, we have the initial velocity at the positions of A, which is zero because it starts from rest. And then the other one, the acceleration is constant. And then the required parameters are just to evaluate the arrow dot as a function of t and then theta dot as a function of t. We have to evaluate them. Now let's try to do our solution. Since the system is under a constant acceleration, we know that for a constant acceleration, distance is equal to initial position plus initial velocity times t plus half a t squared. But to know that there is no any initial velocity and then no initial position, so displacement will be half a t squared. We know that from point O up to the final point P will have the horizontal distance of x. This slanted distance from point A up to the final point is displacement s. So x will become now r plus the horizontal distances of the slanted one is s times cos alpha. This is s times cos alpha component. And then we know that the y components of the system will be y is equals to s times sine alpha. Now this is the geometrical layouts for our calculation. We know that the angle theta is varying with this slanted distance as as the particle moves from point A in the upward direction. Now we can state that x is equal to r plus s cos alpha and then y is equal to s times sine alpha. Now we have a layout. The overall layout is this is x, this is y, and then the slanted distance is represented as r. We have a value of theta here. From a Pythagoras theorem, we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And then r will become the radical x squared plus y squared. If we substitute the value of s as a function of acceleration and time, we'll get x and y. So x will become r plus s is half 80 squared, so half 80 squared times cos alpha, and then y will be equals to s is half 80 squared times sine alpha. Now for solving r dot, we have to derivate r square with respect to time. Let's do that one. 
d by dt of r squared is equals to d by dt of x squared plus y squared, which imply that the derivations of r with respect to time is 2 times r times r dot because r, x, and y are a time dependent function. This imply that d by dt of x square will become also 2x times x dot plus the derivations of y square will be 2 times y times y dot. Since we have 2 in common, we can cancel it out and then rearranging this part is, so r dot will be equals to x times x dot plus y times y dot over r. Now, if we could evaluate x dot, y dot, x, y, and r, then we can calculate the value of r dot. Let's do that one now. What the value of x dot? Now, the value of x dot is just derivating x with respect to time. So, x dot will become the value of x dot from the previous equation. And since r is constant, it will be cancelled out. The only variable is t squared. And then the derivations of t square will be 2 times t. That means, finally, once we derivate that equation, we'll have half a times cos alpha times the derivation of t square is 2 times t, which is equals to, it will cancel out, so it will become a times t times cos alpha. And then the derivations of y dot half sine alpha times the derivation of t square is 2 times t. That means it will become a times t times sine alpha. Now this is x dot and then y dot. Now let's substitute all these values to evaluate what the r dot is. So r dot will become the value of x is, we know that it's r plus half a t squared times cos alpha, and then the value of x dot is now a t times cos alpha, plus the value of y is stated here, that means half a t squared sine alpha times, and then the value of y dot is now here, a t times sine alpha, divided with and then the value of r is the under radicals of x square plus y square, which means under radical r plus half a t squared times cos alpha the whole square, and then the value of y is half alpha times acceleration times t square times sine alpha the whole square. So under radical of this one is just our answer. This is the final answer. Now for evaluating theta dot, we can apply a simple parameter here. This is the angle theta. This is x and this is y. We know that tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, that means y over x, which implies that if we derivate both with respect to time, we will get a theta dot. That means the derivations of tan theta d by dt of tan theta will become the derivations of tan theta as a function of theta is just sec square theta. We can apply a chain rule, and a theta is also a function of time, so times theta dot. And then we know that the derivations of some function y over x as a function of t will become the derivations of the upper function times the lower one, which means y dot times x minus the derivations of the lower part times the upper one. That means x dot times y over the lower functions square. So it will be x square. We know this one. So all parameters are known, that means six square theta times theta dot is equals to y dot x minus x dot times y over x 
squared. This implies that theta dot will become 1 over 6 squared theta times y dot x minus x dot times y over x squared. This one is our governing equation for evaluating theta dot. Now let's substitute the values for each section. Before that, we know that 1 over sec theta is equal to cos theta. That means 1 over sec squared theta will become cos squared theta. So theta dot is equal to the inverse of 1 over sec squared theta is cos squared theta times. We know that the value of y dot, if we substitute that value, we'll get a times t times sine alpha. And then the value of x is r plus half a t squared cos alpha minus the value of x dot is a t cos alpha. And then the value of y is half t squared sine alpha divided with x square, which means x is r plus half a t squared times cos alpha the whole square. Now this is the final answer for a theta dot. We can simplify this one. If you need, just simplify 